There's another um, active mission going on on the surface of Mars, a lander called InSight. Let's fly over to go see where InSight touched down, actually just north of Gale Crater. Also sent by NASA to visit Mars, this lander touched down and isn't moving around on the surface. So InSight is in this large flat area on Mars called Elysium Planitia. It's a nice safe place to touch down where they set up a seismometer. So InSight has a device that can measure vibrations underground through the surface of Mars to help us study the interior, what's going on inside of Mars. These are basically looking for Mars quakes. Let's take a look at a diagram that shows us what InSight looks like, as well as a photo taken from the surface of Mars of the, uh, the seismometer after it was deployed in 2018 when InSight touched down. Now what we see here on the left is the artist diagram that shows us um, that there's a robotic arm on top of InSight that helps deploy the instruments. And we see um, sort of in the lower left of the picture the seismometer placed on the surface of Mars. And again on the right we have a real photograph of that seismometer deployed on Mars. It's looking for vibrations through the ground of Mars. What we're finding is that the crust, the solid rock shell, um, on Mars is much thicker than on Earth's and that it behaves kind of like a cross between the Earth and the Moon. On the Moon, the crust is very, very dry and so when there are impacts and cracks in that crust of the Moon, they have vibrations, moonquakes that pass through them and they ring for tens of minutes, a long time because those vibrations are getting slowed down by all the fractures and cracks in the crust. But on Earth, our crust is much thinner. It's very thin, even broken into tectonic plates. And when you have vibrations pass through our crust, most of the smaller fractures are filled in by sediments. Water and other processes, geologic processes, fill in those most of the cracks. And so earthquakes pass through our crust in seconds. What we're finding is on Mars, InSight is seeing Mars quakes that vibrate for about a minute kind of a cross between the moon's crust and the Earth's crust. I'll move our view over so you can actually see on the diagram where the seismometer is on the far left there. Now you'll also see another instrument um, in the left picture, a little bit more on the right side of that photo, there's a heat probe that will be deployed or has been deployed um, and is in the process of digging down into the crust of Mars. It's meant to go 16 feet down, which is further than we've ever gone into Mars, to look at how heat moves through the rocks, moves through the crust. But what we've discovered so far is that not all soil across Mars is the same. The soil here seems to be quite different than rovers and landers that have touched down in other places on Mars. And it's giving a scientists struggle. They're having trouble getting the probe to dig down into the surface of Mars. There's actually not enough friction in the soil um, for it to dig down. And so they're starting to try to do maneuvers like pin um, the, the probe so that it can go down further. They're using the robotic arm to do this. In fact, we're going to take a look at a video that shows us this pinning maneuver to try to get the probe to move further down into the soil. It's been somewhat successful so far and uh, engineers and scientists are hopeful that they can get the probe um, down far enough into the soil to take some good heat measurements. But if nothing else, we are learning about some of the difficulties with technology on Mars as well as the type of soil that we see there. Now, two of the largest earthquakes that InSight has heard, scientists have figured out where they came from on Mars. So let's go fly over to that region fairly nearby. It's called Cerberus Fosse. And what we see here is 
some large um, slashes, sort of lines across Mars. If you look to sort of the left side of your screen there, you should see two very large trenches. So close up, these are trenches in the surface of Mars. They're very straight, very linear. Let's take a look at a picture of one of the trenches of Cerberus Fosse, where these earthquakes or Mars quakes have been coming from. We'll bring up a photo taken by the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter. So this is a closer up view of one of the trenches. Um, it has a lot of blue color here that's been um, basically artificially added in to highlight some of the contrast in the photograph that we see here of the trench. And seeing shaking coming from this trench makes sense. The rocks here are some of the youngest we see on Mars and the fact that these trenches are here are telling us that they might be fault lines. On Earth, we have fault lines where you have a division between tectonic plates. Earth's crust is thin, it's broken into big plates that are floating on the more molten inner layers of Earth. And that's where you get a lot of geologic activity happening. And so here on Mars, we're seeing that here, except Mars doesn't have a global system of tectonic plates. We only see a few fault lines across Mars, but it's still the places where we're seeing geologic activity happening on Mars. And InSight hearing those Mars quakes is confirmation of that. In fact, let's take a look at one more picture um, taken by the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter. Um, from space around Mars, and this is going to show us uh, another view of the Cerberus Fosse. But this is showing us a landslide. So you can see that light blue color in some of those rocks matches a very thin layer of light blue at the edge of the, the cliff face for the trench at the top of the picture there. That's rocks that have sort of fallen down the hill in a landslide. And again, that matches up with us seeing large earthquakes, again, Mars quakes from this region. Let's talk more about the future exploration of Mars. We're going to go fly back over to Jezero Crater and end our show with a little bit about Perseverance, the lander that's or the rover that is going to land on Mars next year. So we're getting closer to Jezero Crater, and what you'll see here is this round area in sort of the, the lower center of your screen. And just on the edge of that circular crater is a dark sort of S-shaped pattern, a curve. That's a channel that's being carved, um, that has been carved, we think, in the past by a river. We think there was another ancient lake filling in this crater, much like Gale Crater. But let's take a better look at this by seeing a photograph that was taken with the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter. It'll show us a clearer view here of the crater. This is actually several photos stitched together. And you'll notice that in the upper uh, left-hand corner of the photograph, you can see more clearly that channel being carved by a river and a delta. The yellowish-green color that you see there on the left side of the crater, that's showing us where there are carbonates. Basically, the orbiter from space is able to look at some of the light signatures from the rocks and try to look for a basic overview of some of the material that's in that crater. And it's a rover, like the Perseverance rover, that can study it in more detail. We think that area is filled with carbonates, and on Earth, carbonates are where we find fossils. So our hope is that we might be able to find evidence of fossils, of past life that arose on Mars with the Perseverance rover landing here in Jezero Crater. But we won't know if that past life was there until the, the rover lands and starts exploring. We're going to end with talking about another one of Perseverance's missions. It's going to be taking a look at past life on Mars, but also paving the way for future exploration by humans, possible manned missions in the future to Mars. One of the ways that it's doing that is by using um, an instrument called MOXIE. It's going to be grabbing carbon dioxide from the atmosphere of Mars and trying to turn it into oxygen um, that maybe people could breathe, that could be used 
use to make water or possibly for propellant, for fuel to launch people back off the surface of Mars. And so being able to use some of the resources on Mars will be really important um, for limiting what we have to take with us to go there. Now, it's also going to have the very first aircraft, a helicopter that it's taking with it to try to test the technology of a drone helicopter flying on Mars, the first aircraft to fly on another planet. This is very difficult technology to build and to test out on Mars because the Martian atmosphere is thin, only 1% the Earth's atmosphere thickness. And so it's difficult to fly a helicopter there. And we need to test this technology because helicopters would be wonderful scouts. They can fly ahead and figure out the best routes, help us figure out the best routes to take either for rovers or for people that need to go far distances across the surface of Mars, which way to head. And so we're going to end here with a video. It's going to show us an artist's depiction of the Mars helicopter Perseverance is taking, as well as some of the real test flights of the helicopter that NASA experimented with. And so that helicopter will hopefully be flying on Mars next year, giving us an insight into what it will be like to explore Mars further and maybe even send human manned missions to visit the Red Planet.